Hello, I'm Jim Zub. I'm a professional comic book writer. These videos are a way for me to answer questions that I get about working in the comic book industry or the craft of writing comics. So I try and answer as many of them as I can, either through my Patreon page or questions that I receive on Twitter or the uh, Comic School Discord channel. This particular question is about word count and uh, balloon count. Comics are a really unique medium in the sense that unlike a script for film or, or things like that, where an actor is going to be you know, reading out those lines or improving some of those things, the text that is being written, you know, by the writer or the, in some cases, if they're doing it Marvel style and they're scripting the dialogue after the art is finished, that final dialogue is going to then be lettered. And each of those word balloons or captions is going to show up on the page. The amount of those that we use can have a huge difference in terms of the real estate that the artist has to work with. There are times when you want to get wordy, when you need a lot of dialogue or you need a lot of uh, information being imparted through the text. And there's other times where you need to get out of the way of the artist and let that art, you know, take the forefront as much as possible. And finding that balance is really a matter of practice. And it also changes depending on the art team and the type of story that you're going to tell. I'm going to show you a couple different examples here. I know a lot of people, um, they're looking for an exact formula. So they might say, well, I was told that you should never have more than 30 words in a panel, or you can't have any more than you know three balloons per panel, or make sure you only have uh, three to four lines in a balloon or all kinds of different things like that. And those can be pretty good to start with, uh, you know, having a sense of, of an overall kind of don't go past this point or don't get overly wordy or make sure you're leaving enough room for this stuff. Those are, are good common sense ways of thinking. But you also don't want to shut down all, you know, anything that moves outside of those barriers, because that's when you start to get really kind of stodgy looking stuff. You know, as I write a comic, I'm obviously trying to imagine how the pages are playing out and how those panels are going to appear. And then the artist is doing the same kind of thing based on what I've described in the script, I'm activating their imagination and getting them excited to portray those moments. And really that's what comics are. Let me jump into a, a really recent example. This is Conan the Barbarian number 23. It actually just came out this week. I love working on this series, which is why I keep using examples from Conan, uh, one of my absolute favorite characters, and to be able to work on this series and write the flagship book is, is a deep honor. So this is uh, Conan 23, uh, awesome cover art here, you get to see there's our, you know, the credits for our amazing crew. And right from the get-go, this is, you know, the issue playing out. We left Conan in a really bad spot last issue, no surprise there, the whole nature of serialized storytelling and cliffhangers. And we open with a series of captions. And within those, you know, I try to limit it to uh, larger panels. We would only have, you know, two or three text call outs, in this case, two captions in the first panel, two simple lines of dialogue and a caption in the second panel. We've got two in the third here with that close up. And then, you know, again, we have a, a third one in this smaller panel, but it's literally just someone crying out in pain. So it's not exactly going to take up a lot of page real estate there. Once we move through this next sequence, it's really like one caption per panel. And that's not any sort of hard and fast rule, but I don't, I, first of all, it, it's the nature of this sequence. Conan is on the run and trying to break out of this palace. The amount of time it takes for the reader to even read a panel changes the way they feel about that panel. It slows everything down. The more text that's on a page slows down that reading process. I want this to have a slightly clipped kind of speed to it because that's what's happening in the scene as well. Conan is on the run and he's, uh, you know, making his way through this particular area. And then when he leaps out of the window, uh, you know, we open things up so we can get that big, beautiful splash page and uh, his line of dialogue. So it's, um, you know, it's about picking your moments. If I know a big splash page is going to be about the art, I don't want to overload it with dialogue, obviously. As this sequence moves through, we're cutting between these big moments. Usually, 
you know, two or three lines, someone says something, someone reacts. It's rare that you want to have someone saying something, someone reacting, and then the first person, you know, talking again, unless you know you're going to have space for it, or at least one of those balloons is very short so that it can be tucked in beneath the other ones or on top of the other ones. But you'll notice here in panel three, you know, we've got uh, this guy, Maltus Ray, he's our kind of villainous uh, traitor here. He's talking, you know, with these two dense lines because he's in charge. The guy beside him is responding in much more kind of clipped short lines because he's not the one in charge of this particular sequence. There's a back and forth going on. And this is a bit rare. Again, we've got the first character, Maltus Ray, speaking. Then we've got Mayway responding to him and then him following up with another line. So that back and forth kind of dialogue parlay between them, you could do that over a couple panels, but here we sort of stretched it out over one horizontal. The key here is you're trying to vary things up and not make it intensely difficult for the artist to portray, you know, multiple emotions or for the letterer, you know, to jam in that, that text. Like you don't want them to feel like they're having to compromise on the storytelling in order to wedge in all that stuff. One of the most important things you can do as a writer is go back through these uh, pages once you have the script written, once the art is drawn and be judicious about what, you know, lines need to be there, where they're gonna be placed so that the letterer is aware and, and ready to go. And you won't have to do a lot of edits later. And also, you know, are you giving enough room for the art to breathe? Is there enough space for these things to play out? The nice thing about writing a series like Conan is pages like this where the captions, uh, you know, reinforce and tell us something about the world or tell us something about the atmosphere while the art is identifying something else. I really love how this page turned out. So we're sort you know, this, this um, narrative where we're saying when most people think of Shimmerians, they envision fighters fierce with rage, bellowing and brash, but there's another side to Krom's children. They are skilled trackers who survey their targets in silence. And so we're letting you know that Conan is not just, you know, the bellowing kind of brash barbarian, but that there is um, this stealthy quality to them, and then we're showing it to you. So these, the captions are kind of broadening your knowledge of who Conan is and his people, but we're showing it to you in this really kind of interesting fashion. Because otherwise, there wouldn't be much dialogue here. It's all about staying silent. It's all about sneaking around. So with the captions, I can add a bit of a I wouldn't even say poetic, but a more descriptive or kind of interesting edge to the scene and build up before we get to another dialogue sequence. Here, obviously, there's a lot of chatter between the two of them, but I'm trying really hard not to have, again, lots of back and forths in one panel. The exception being here in panel four, we've got, you know, Mayway speaking two lines, then Conan says a line. And then Mayway responds to that line. And that's unusual. You don't want to have a lot of that back and forth because it tends to crowd the panel. But it works here because the last line that she's saying is so short. So I won't go through the entire issue. What I'm going to do is compare that to the scripted version here. And what you can see, this is my script that I wrote for the same issue and how it all kind of breaks down. And, and what you can see is the nice thing about this script format that I use is uh, you get a pretty clear sense. You know, most of the, the lines that I write are the short stuff's not even going to be half of one line filling up here. The, um, if a line goes for two, that tends to work and fills a word balloon quite well. And on the rare occasion, I might fill in a third kind of line here in terms of dialogue. I would almost never go over three. Like three is sort of pushing the limit for me in terms of how much is going to fit well into a caption or into a word balloon. And you don't want to go overboard with that stuff. <clears throat> You'll notice here, most of them are one creeping into the second one, two full you know, lines are going to fill a word balloon well. And that's, let me count it off here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 words in that particular 
you know, word balloon. So somewhere around, you know, 20 words can fit well into that word balloon, depending on the intensity of them and not feel too crowded. If I do need more than that, as we go a little bit deeper, most of these are very short, little simple descriptions. But as we get further into it, you know, we've got more, you know, I've got 14 text callouts here on page six, and uh, there's a more intense kind of back and forth, even still, I would rather break up a line into two separate balloons. So something like this in panel two, don't be foolish girl, I didn't kill your blessed leader. Like that's sort of a, a point being made by Conan there. And then the next line is, I was set up by Maltus Ray. He slit the emperor's throat and then called me murderer. I mean, in theory, you could put that all in one word balloon, but breaking it into two separate ones just gives it a bit more room to breathe and it'll give the letterer a little bit more flexibility to push it around. Same kind of thing here. Mayway asks a question and then his answer, his immediate answer is one balloon all by itself. So she says, but why? And then Conan says, a play for power, I assume. Boom, there's sort of a breath there. You can imagine a slight pause so we can make this a separate balloon. Before the old man's corpse hit the floor, he told me there were deep divisions in the noble families. So there is a point. Now, Mayway responds to that, but rather than jamming that into the same panel, it feels like, you know, Conan's just said quite a mouthful here in the text call out number eight. So trying to cram in a longer response from Mayway in the same panel just feels like it's going to be a log jam. So I push it to the next panel. It also means that the artist is going to have a chance, in this case, Corey Smith, he's going to have the chance to draw more expressions, characters reacting to each other, characters, you know, in, engaging with each other in this conversation. Here at the bottom, obviously, it gets a little bit more involved. You know, she um, responds to everything that's being said, and there's four text callouts in this panel, but we've got two short ones and then the one longer one there. So because the majority of them are shorter, it's just gonna work a heck of a lot better. And then as we're going along, again, you know, back and forth, these interplays and these conversations. Notice that none of them are, are you know, digging in with lines and lines and lines. I'm not doing huge paragraphs of, of dialogue. There's just no reason to. And it, it won't look good on the page. Now, this isn't to say that I never uh, do longer sequences or I never have longer chunks of dialogue. I'm going to show you an example from Stone Star, which is a space fantasy creator-owned series that I made with Max Dunbar. And this particular page is one of the denser ones that I think I've done in, in probably recent memory. Uh, there's a lot of exposition going on on this page. And in turn, we had to, you know, just fill the page with text. Now, Max is an amazing artist. That guy can, you know, make a page work kind of no matter what. But I generally don't overload him like this in very many cases. So you can see here, there's pretty reasonable you when know, a one line per character as we move across the panel, two lines here for Dale. And then Volness responds to him. This is all pretty typical stuff in terms of the way I do dialogue. But then we've got this unusual one here in panel three, where Volness is saying one, two, three, four, five, six balloons worth of dialogue in one panel. I mean, that is a rarity. He's essentially monologuing. He's he's info dumping for us. And, uh, you know, it's not the kind of thing that I would do very often, but in this case, it allowed us to cover a lot of ground, narratively speaking, and I wanted it to be, um, you know, I, I thought that it all had relevant things to say in terms of the story. So every so often, you can pull that sort of thing out. In this case, Max just gave, you know, like, two thirds of this horizontal panel are basically just empty and Espen put in a, a gradient so that we can fill in all that dialogue. And with that much text in there, having this bouncing back and forth, Marshall Dillon, our letterer did a wonderful job that he's broken down all these bite-sized pieces and your eye follows a logical order going through each of them so that things like, you know, too bad can still have its own emphasis, nothing you can do. There's this nice, feeling of a rhythm as you go through the dialogue rather than it feeling like an absolute slog that you have to get through. And that's a matter of sort of picking your battles. You know, there are always uh, going to be exceptions 
So as much as I would love to say to you, you must always put this much text on a page. You must never put this much text on a page. I don't think it's that simple. I, you know, anything in the creative process is about figuring out what works best for you and what works best with the artist. As much as I would love to say, you know, generally in modern comics, it's rare for us to have, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten panels on a page. The artist that you're working with, that might be something that they really specialize in. They want to have these tiny little focused panels. Uh, as much as I might say, every time you you have a dense page, the next page must be a two page spread or something. That's just not true. It depends on the pacing of your story. It depends on what effect you want that story to have. So the best thing for you to do, instead of me giving you some sort of absolute formula, is for you to analyze your favorite comics. Look at your favorite artists and your favorite writers. How do they pace out their stories? what is the tendency there literally look and say oh you know if i just went through my favorite issue you know of a comic and wrote down the number of panels on each page it doesn't take you very long to do and you might be surprised by what comes out of that kind of analysis or you could go through and do the same thing about word balloons how many word balloons do they have how dense are they how often do they have interplays that are just one character A speaks and character B responds? And how many times do they have A, B, A or A, B, C, you know, characters um, speaking, responding, reacting to each other? The more that you look at the form and you analyze it, the better you're going to be at creating it. The most important thing is to not be passive about, you know, the storytelling and not be passive about the art form. If you want to get good at writing comics, you have to analyze comics. You have to understand the form and you have to practice at it. So like everything else, um, you know, I can give you some overall guidance and I can show you some things that have worked well for me, but in the end, you're going to find your own path. As long as it reads well and as long as your readers are entertained, then you've done the job well. I hope you found it helpful and I hope it helps you on your own comic creating journey. Go forth and make some comics.